version of language? And the answer is, oh no, it isn't. If you actually go and listen to what people talk about on a day-to-day -day basis, back there in their homes or on the street or over the garden fence, then it's about social relationships. The most surprising thing was actually how much time people did spend in social gossip, if you like. I mean, we, we really hadn't expected it to be so great. Social exchange of information should be important in people's lives. We really hadn't expected it to be perhaps more than about a third of total conversation time. And here we were at uh, two thirds. Two thirds of all conversation Robin Dunbar believes is dedicated to gossip. Throughout human evolution, could nature have selected not just for the fittest, but for those with the most acute social skills? What language does, the bottom line, if you like, is it just allows us to hold big groups together. It's like a kind of opening a window of opportunity. Suddenly there's all sorts of other things you can do with it. Uh, because you can use it to solicit information about third parties, so you can now see what happened when you weren't actually present at the time. And the problem all monkeys and apes have is if they don't see it, they don't know about it. They never will. Gossip is certainly one of the things that language is useful for, because it's always handy to know who needs a favor, who can offer a favor, who's available, who's under the protection of a jealous spouse. And being the first to get a piece of gossip is like engaging in insider trading. You can capitalize on an opportunity before anyone else can. But language is useful for other things, for exchanging technical know-how. How do you get poison out of the gland of a toad? Uh, what's the best way to make a spear? Where are the berries? What's the best time of year to hunt? It's also good for one-on-one -on -one negotiations. If you give me some of your meat, I'll give you some of my fruit. There are all kinds of ways that language can be useful. Gossip, I think, is just one of them. Language, the force that created modern human culture and that today tells us who we are, how we belong, and where we're bound. Language, according to Richard Dawkins, is also central to a new and powerful evolutionary force. As far as a human lifetime is concerned, the only kind of evolutionary change we're likely to see very much of is not genetic evolution at all is cultural evolution. And if we put a Darwinian spin on that, then we're going to be talking about the differential survival of memes as opposed to genes. Memes are ideas, habits, skills, gestures, stories, songs, anything which we pass from person to person by imitation. We copy them. Now, just as genes are copied inside all the cells of our body and passed on in, in reproduction. Memes are copied by our brains and our behavior and they're passed from person to person. And I think what happens is just as the competition between genes shapes all of biological evolution, so it's the competition between memes that shapes our minds and our cultures. So it's absolutely central to understanding human nature that we take account of memes. Sue Blackmore believes memes have been the forces driving human evolution especially since the mind's Big Bang some 50,000 years ago. She sees ideas, prejudices, trends, and breakthroughs behaving much like genes, self-replicating and accumulating from mind to mind, society to society, generation to generation. Memes are the building blocks of a new kind of evolution. If units of culture replicate themselves in something like the same way as DNA molecules replicate themselves, then we have the possibility of a, a completely new kind of Darwinism. Changes in the human lifestyle for the last 50,000 years have had very little to do with any biological change in our brains. The reason that we live differently today from the way the, the cavemen lived is not because we have better brains, but because we've been accumulating all of the thousands of discoveries that our ancestors have made, and we have the benefit of a huge history of inventions that we communicate non-genetically, through language, through documents, through customs. Memes can be more than passing fads. They can be titanic.
They can modify the world, revolutionize life, even suppress the forces of biological evolution. Consider insulin, one such meme, now some 80 years old. Before insulin, diabetics weren't expected to live. It was really considered a fatal disease. I would probably not be here without insulin. It's just been a huge, it's allowed me personally as a diabetic to live. 14-year-old Jared is on a week-long hike with others who share his disease, juvenile diabetes. An outing like this may not appear revolutionary, but it is. With exercise, a diabetic's blood sugar balance can plummet dangerously. Mm, 231. Normally that's pretty high, but on the trail we try to keep keep our blood sugars up just in case we go low and you know we just want to make sure that we've got plenty of sugar in there since we're doing so much exercise. Jared has his condition under control thanks to a device that supplies him with insulin the instant it's required. This may seem mundane today, but before the 1920s, individuals like Jared would have died as children, never to reach the age of reproduction, never to pass on their genes. Now, young diabetics are no longer condemned to death. Insulin, an idea that became a cure, is just one more meme that helps modern humans elude the forces of evolution. Like so many other scientific breakthroughs, it provides us with new ways to survive. A lot of the creations of the brain can make up for physical deficiencies and could actually change the course of evolution. Thousands of years ago, someone who was severely nearsighted probably wouldn't have had many descendants. He would have been eaten or uh, fallen off a cliff a long time ago. But we invented eyeglasses, and now uh, being nearsighted has no disadvantage at all. There are some people who might say, well, isn't this interfering with evolution? Uh, wouldn't we be better off letting the, the diabetics and the nearsighted uh, die an early death to improve the physical vigor of the species? That really goes against the way human evolution works, which is that for tens of thousands of years, we depend for our survival on our own inventions, on our own creation, and this is simply extending that process. Our revolt against biological evolution has taken many forms. Call it culture, call it memes, call it mimetic evolution, whatever. It makes every one of us this planet's best survivor, so far. Nowadays, I would say that mimetic evolution is going faster and faster, and it is almost entirely taken over from biological evolution. Not entirely, in the sense that two are, the two are going along hands in hand. For example, birth control, the memes of the pill and, and, and condoms and all these things have effects on the genes. In fact, they change quite dramatically across the planet. Who is, which, which genes are getting passed on and which aren't? The more educated you are, the less children you have. That is memes fighting against genes. What's also going on now at the beginning of the 21st century is that the memes have suddenly made themselves a new home. The internet. We thought we created the internet for our own benefit. In fact, if you look in any office and you see people sitting there, you know, slaves of the memes, hello, yeah, fax coming in, yes, yes, oh, email. It's going so fast. I would say what's happened here is the inevitable consequences of the mimetic evolutionary process. The memes are getting better and faster and more and more and creating as they go better copying apparatus for their own copying. I don't know where that leaves us in the future. For our species, as for all others, biological evolution has been the primary engine of change. But since the birth of culture some 50,000 years ago, forces far more powerful have overtaken human evolution. The mind's big bang was the birth of a new kind of change, not of the body, but of ideas. For the future of humankind, evolution may be no more than what we make of it. <laughs>